Hello, and welcome to our Media Lab Hot Item. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Tanya O'Carroll, independent expert on technology and human rights, representing the People versus Big Tech campaign. The reason? A joint campaign from People versus Big Tech and multiple other NGOs highlighting the need to strike down Article 17 of the European Media Freedom Act, also referred to as the media exemption. Tanya, tell us more. Thank you, Caroline. Thanks so much for having me here. Um, so People versus Big Tech is a network of more than 100 organizations in Europe who in, in broad terms are campaigning for stronger regulation and enforcement of digital platforms, particularly the biggest ones, Big Tech. And last year, our community fought really hard to secure a strong Digital Services Act um, with new transparency and accountability obligations on the platforms for the very first time, which we saw as a vital step forward for protecting the digital public sphere which is why it's so strange to find ourselves just one year later fighting one of the very bad provisions that um, had rightfully been rejected uh, during the DSA negotiations. Um, it's back on the table with the European Media Freedom Act. And I'm talking here about the proposals on the table for a media exemption, whether we're talking about a full-blown media exemption or a, some version of special privileges for, for media actors. What we're talking about is it measures that would prevent platforms from effectively moderating content coming from any actor that claims to be media. Um, this is this proposal is a wolf in, in sheep's clothes. It, it purports to strengthen media plurality in the face of the arbitrary powers of big tech. But the reality is that it would achieve just the opposite. Uh, it would give big tech companies a free pass by tying their hands from actually robustly mm -hmm. and consistently moderating harmful content and disinformation. Um, and it would further distort our information ecosystem by creating a two tier Internet where those responsible for spreading disinformation are effectively exempt from any content moderation at all, which just doesn't make sense. Uh, a few of the reasons why the proposal is so bad. First, Article 17 would create a potentially limitless category of actors who can simply self declare that they're media entities self declaration essentially creates no friction or cost to, bad, to deter bad actors from weaponizing this feature. And we know enough about how disinformation operations actually work to know that this, if this feature exists, it will be abused. And even looking across you know, the example of Twitter, um, Twitter Blue in recent months, where as Elon Musk rolled out a, a, you know, a, a version of blue check verification that could be paid for, we saw it was immediately abused by spammers and actors who were spreading disinformation. Article 17 would do something quite similar. It would create a free way that people, um, that, that bad actors could, um, could legitimize themselves to spread disinformation. Um, it will be gamed, essentially. Second, this exemption will have the effect of undermining the very thing that the EMFA was actually set up to do, which is encourage media plurality and integrity. We know that outrage and false news spread faster by a platforms like Twitter and Facebook's algorithms because they elicit emotions which lead to engagement. More engagement equals more advertising and bigger profits for the companies. With a media exemption, the EMFA would give platforms an easy excuse to justify their failure to act. Um, it's already hard enough to get them to take robust action against things like hate speech and disinformation. Now they'll be able to legitimately tell us their hands are being tied by EU law. Third, the media exemption fails to admit pretty uncomfortable truth, which is that harmful, misleading content and false narratives do spread through traditional media too. And they may increasingly become the target of deliberate disinformation, manipulation and disinformation laundering. Um, so some policymakers uh, are, may be tempted to sort of create more narrow definitions of who and what is legitimate media in an attempt to limit this loophole. But it's hard to see how that's gonna be a practical solution when even European case law admits NGOs, citizen journalists, and non-traditional media outlets do act as a source of media and information in today's information landscape. So they're between a rock and a hard place. A, a far better approach is to create a single set of rules that are applied equally to everyone with transparency, accountability, and redress mechanisms, which is exactly what we got with the DSA. You know, newsrooms can and must benefit from clear and user-friendly mechanisms to challenge arbitrary decision-making by platforms. That is absolutely true. And so should arguably ordinary citizens. There is no good reason why, you know, providing a solid um, 
accountability and redress mechanisms to everyone wouldn't actually solve the very problem that the media are, are complaining about right now. I think the EU has created very good scaffolding with the words of the DSA. We haven't had a chance to see that in action yet. It really should, the European Commission should really focus on doubling down and enforcing what we've got um, already on, on the statutes rather than you know, risking undoing those gains by creating a loophole for disinformation in the European Media Freedom Act. Uh, thank you, Tanya. So um, concentrate on enforcement of the DSA rather than creating a new layer that might be unhelpful uh, in, in, in that enforcement. Let's hope that policymakers hear that message. And I'm sure we'll be in, in touch maybe for future developments of the uh, European Media Freedom Act in Brussels. Thank you very much. Thanks so much, Caroline.